The implantation of an ICA small aperture IOL in a post RKI has advantages regarding the reduction of optical aberrations. At the same time, the small aperture increases the depth of focus and improves intermediate and near vision. The implantation, however, can be complicated by some traps I like to reveal in this video for fellow surgeons. At the time of surgery, our patient was 55 years of age. She had an RK 20 years ago elsewhere. The primary pre-refraction was minus 2.5 diopter and regression set on 5 years after the refractive surgical procedure and continued for about 10 years. Meanwhile, she turned out to become hyperopic with plus 3.5 diopter on the right eye and plus 6 diopter on the left eye. Uncorrected visual acuity was 0.4 on the right and 0.2 on the left eye. Best corrected visual acuity was 0.8 and 0.6. The slit lamp revealed an incipient cataract, which very probably was the cause for significant photophobia and the reduction of visual acuity. Corneal tomography confirmed the cause of post RK regression. The central cornea had flattened significantly to 33 diopters, with a gradient of 7 diopters to the steep mid periphery. Spherical aberration was significant. We will see that the surgical approach must consider the corneal weakness due to the eight radial incisions reaching far out to the corneal periphery. The perilimbal incision therefore must be as far outside as possible at the outer ball line of the conjunctiva fixer. The conjunctiva is prepared over widths of 4 mm because the IC8 implantation needs at least an incision of 3.5 mm. The 2.2 mm opening for the phaco tip entry is positioned just in the middle between two radial incisions. Same relative position for the paracentesis. From here on, the phaco procedure is just as usual with capsulorexis aiming on 5 mm diameter, followed by hydrodissection and viscomobilization of the nucleus. I usually divide the nucleus into three pieces. The FACO machine I'm using is in this case the Centurion from Alcon with Ozil IP and active fluidic set at 40 mm mercury. You can see how stable and calm the anterior chamber remains during the emulsification process. Once the nucleus is emulsified and removed, the cortex is aspirated and the capsular bag is cleaned up. The bimanual tips ensure a 360 degree axis. The aspiration device has a soft polypropylene tip which prevents tearing the capsule when it's aspirated accidentally. The chamber is stabilized with OVD and the perilimbal incision has now to be opened to 3.5 mm. The IC8 is prepared for implantation. The shooter is inserted ready for implantation. The plus 28 diopter IC8 is centered within the capsular bag. Just when the IA tips are introduced for cleaning up the OVD, the problem is obvious. One of the RK incision has perforated and we have a completely new situation. The accidentally Large wound needs to be closed now. The sutures must be tight without inducing too much astigmatism. A 10O proline suture is used for this purpose. The first stitch is set from inside the outer wound lip to have the knot buried. Hereby we do not have to swipe the crossing suture. The knot is gently tied with the eye under pressure.
Is it waterproof now? Nope. So a second suture has now to be placed in order to close the gap. Hopefully this is going to be the last one. That looks good. Now the wound is tied and the procedure can be finished with insulation of antibiotics and subconjunctival steroids. Both eyes were operated within the same week. The fellow eye with plus 6 diopter refraction received a monofocal IOL with plus 33 diopters. Uncorrected visual acuity of the right eye with small aperture IOL was 1.0, despite the corneal astigmatism of 1.75 diopters. Left eye turned out to be more myopic than planned. Best corrected visual acuity was 1.0 as well. In summary, the result was very satisfying for the patient with a blended monovision outcome, enabling her to see at all distances without the need of spectacles. Photophobia was much less bothering and both eyes work very well together. Thank you for your kind interest.